um, we 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 call it CO toucan. Um, hence the, the the little bird on the logo. But um, yeah, I'll first hand over to Cham to to give you a quick introduction of uh, of the talk that we're going to give today. Awesome. So well, uh, thank you guys for joining or staying from the last talk. Uh, and it's pretty great to be part of this post-apocalyptic uh, conference. So a big shout out to the organizers of NonCon. Uh, so I will be introducing Curve Labs, the umbrella organization that is uh, carrying out uh, these design interventions, as we call them. And then Rafael will uh, take the floor and introduce sort of a general frame around uh, the situation with carbon markets. I think Michelle also touched upon in this previous talk. And then he will present our design intervention, which is CO token, how we plan to uh, take this uh, sort of um, solution space to the Web3. And perhaps uh, this will cascade down to many sometimes uh, unpredictable solution spaces in different areas. Well, so Curve Labs essentially is, uh, just I mentioned a couple of times, it's a design intervention laboratory. Uh, and we use this uh, sort of neologism quite a lot. Uh, so what that actually means is that we take primitives that are belonging to the Web3 space, like uh, governance primitives, like DAOs, or uh, price discovery primitives, like curve bonding. And we take them outside of the comfort zone of Web3 and we design uh, usable and repeatable uh, applications for yeah, real world implementation essentially and uh, yeah who are we our past projects are uh, sort of uh, collaborative technologies like pando a collaborative uh, vcs like sort of a web3 native uh, git uh, unfortunately the project was uh, discontinued due to lack of funding um, then we moved on to argon black where we built uh, uh, sort of state-of-the-art uh, automated market makers on top of Aragon, which used batched orders, and uh, DAO stack, which is one of the uh, most prominent governance uh, protocols out there. Um, yeah, so uh, this design implementation is about uh, taking coll collaborative research uh, where uh, we don't pretend to know everything and we are uh, collaborating with the uh, perfect designers and perfect researchers from around the ecosystem. Uh, common stack is what one example, and uh, there are many others uh, in respective fields. And uh, yeah, our design principles include modularity and composability. So these things can come together to form higher order system. So we can have uh, sort of not startups, but actually systems design, uh, which is again, very similar to uh, common stacks uh, mentality here. Of course, our implementation principle is uh, definitely also and usability could be others um, yeah and when we came together we sat down to identify sort of the biggest pain points uh, that uh, the primitives that we are cultivating inside the web3 space could address and these include obviously the data tyranny of uh, silicon valley mentality and criticizing it uh, only goes to uh, uh, you know only uh, so far so we actually uh, uh, started to formalize our uh, sort of uh, the alternative essentially and uh, others are effective peer organization and uh, we see uh, DAOs becoming the uh, their true potential into digital cooperatives in the IRL um, so that's uh, yeah this the, 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 the fullest potential of this technology could be truly uh, absorbed by the cooperative world and of course the energy transition how to um, create a more sustainable energy mix and how to incentivize those upgrades while uh, creating a new universal uh, carbon standard, which is uh, more dignified than the current uh, sham, let's call it uh, again, like uh, Raphael will mention to you in more detail. Um, yeah, and that's quite it. Raphael, please take the floor and uh, all yours. Cheers. Thanks so much. So yeah, I'll start by giving you a quick introduction into carbon markets. So um, how they look today, what the opportunity space um, is and or what, what we see as the, the reason why we step into carbon markets right now. 
and then our vision for the future and what we're currently working on. So let's uh, let's jump into the status quo. So I think you know you're all familiar familiar with the tragedy of the commons, and uh, we use our atmosphere as the waste dump. And um, I personally think we should use um, we should use atmosphere, uh, or we should treat climate change as a waste management problem. Uh, so this means we we try to reduce um, our waste as much as possible, but sometimes it's just inevitable. Um, our actions have negative externalities, they produce emissions, and so we have to pay somebody to remove these emissions. And essentially, this is what um, carbon markets try to do, right? They try to put a price on carbon uh, with the objective to internalize these externalities. And a very simple, so it's very like a simplification of the process is basically you have some projects which sequester carbon, so they pull CO2 out of the atmosphere. And um, a traditional example is, you know, planting trees, for instance, and they get carbon offset certificates for, for doing so. And then these carbon offset certificates are bought by carbon emitters. So these are either industry players that are under regulation. So these are called compliance markets or individuals that just have a bad conscience and want to like do something good for the environment or also businesses who just want to signal their contribution to climate change um, or to fight climate change um, to, to their customers. So uh, the key principles that uh, apply to, to these carbon offset projects are uh, additionality. So they have to be additional, which means that the money that flows into this project have to lead to additional emission reductions. So if the project would have taken place uh, anyways, then they're not additional and then they don't count as carbon offset certificates or they are not eligible for receiving carbon offset certificates. They have to be sustainable, which means that um, the if you plant a tree, you have to guarantee that the tree is not cut down two years later and burnt because otherwise the carbon sequestration would not um, yeah, would not be sustainable, and in the long run, it wouldn't have any emission reduction. It has to be verifiable, um, which means that there needs to be there needs to be a track record of uh, what has happened, and uh, people have to be sure that that it actually that the emission reductions have ac actually taken place. And lastly, they have to be reliable. So reliability is basically that when you purchase these carbon offset certificates. You want to be sure that somebody else didn't buy them before you. So basically, uh, no double counting. And we will see that these key principles are not met uh, every time, or most of the time they are not met. So um, let's dive a little bit deeper into uh, a carbon offset life cycle. So how do these uh, carbon offsets, are, how are they created? So through it quickly so you get an idea. So you start with a project design document where you basically lay out what you want to do, right? So how big is your project? Um, how do you plan to measure it? And what methodology do you plan to follow? Then you need to get the approval uh, by a designated national authority that you can do this carbon offset project. Then you need a third party auditor. It's called the uh, designated operational entity, the DOE, to validate your project design document. And then you have the certifier. So the certifier, uh, for example, there's the UN Clean Development Mechanism or Gold Standard, and they have a certain methodology that you have to follow. And um, basically all they do is providing you with that, with the trust, right? They're uh, there to provide the trust in the, in the system. So you just do your project with these certifying bodies. Then you start your project. And after a year or two, you monitor. So you check out what uh, how much carbon you have actually sequestered. Then you have another auditor who's going to verify your monitoring and your certification process. And then it goes to uh, back to the certifier who's going to issue these certificates. And just to give you an idea, they take some part, sometimes up to 30% uh, of, of a cut just for, for being this trusted, this trusted body. And that's now you, you know you're a project and you have these certificates and now you have to sell these certificates. And normally how that's done is you go through retailers or brokers or even like carbon funds. And um, so 
you know, you can see that there's a lot of intermediaries and they all take a, a piece of the pie. And actually, there are pretty weird incentives also in place between these um, different players. So while this is all good, we can see here um, that carbon pricing has been like has been become more popular in the in this past years, but still we're like not even at twenty percent um, of emissions which ha which have a price on carbon, and most of this these prices are very very low, so they're not really merely high enough. So the reason why we we address the space is because we thought fuck we need to really massively increase the uh, the rate at which we sequester carbon, right? Because uh, at the current speed, we're really not we're really not going fast enough. But then we realize that it's not necessarily only a demand problem; it's actually also a supply problem. So let's look into into the opportunity space because these problems in the carbon markets are actually also a, a, a chance for us, a chance for these projects. So. Right now, carbon markets are super, super fragmented. So these are only, uh, this is a map showing the different emission trading systems, um, which all, all have like different, you know, different uh, vehicles to, to price carbon. And um, to give you an idea, so you have all these different mechanisms in place and um, they all produce uh, different acronyms basically or different certificates, which all describe one ton of, of CO2. So you have uh, assigned emission units, you have the European unit allowances, you have certified emission reductions from the clean development mechanism, emission reduction units. And then you also have the voluntary markets and you have the verified emission reductions or sometimes called voluntary emission reductions. And sometimes the certified emission reductions are also used in the voluntary markets. And this is just to show you an idea that, you know, there's many different things that mean the same thing, but they don't necessarily uh, work together. And especially they don't have the same quality. And this is just an idea to give you uh, um, of, the, of, the, of the weird incentives that are in place, right? So this is basically um, uh, just a diagram showing the distribution of these AAUs um, per country. And weirdly, Ukraine and Russia together hold 80% of all AAUs. So um, this, is, this is basically because they gamed the system, right? So um, the incentives that are in place are, uh, yeah, are weird, which has lead, led to, um, to a loss of trust in the system. Like people, when they think of carbon offsets, they don't think of something really that you can trust. It sounds more like, you know, people think of greenwashing. And uh, they have good reason to think so because 80% and some like studies show that even more of these um, emission uh, allowances, they are, they're, they're just hot air. They don't have any additional positive uh, effect on, on, on our climate. And so we realized that before tackling the demand side, we actually have to tackle the supply first, right? And to reinstate trust in these carbon offsets um, systems. And we think it's the right time to do so because these last two years, you know, we had uh, Greta and um, Fridays for Futures, which have really uh, created a huge, huge um, buzz in, in, in the media. And, you know, our younger, the younger generation is on the streets and uh, also the companies are starting to care, right? So um, you have Microsoft, which have gone forward to say that, hey, we want to cut all our uh, emissions and also our historical emissions and also the emissions that are um, part of our supply chain. Uh, BlackRock has gone forward and uh, the European uh, emission has, cre has created an uh, environmental law which basically uh, dictates that the European Union has to be climate uh, or carbon neutral by 2050. So it definitely feels like it's the right time to, to, to tackle these challenges. Um, yeah. And also because we have we're in the midst of a, of a pandemic and an economic crisis and i'm personally quite um right i see this as a i see this as a chance because instability has always been uh, a driver for change and uh, we've seen this in the last economic crisis i mean um bitcoin has been created in the last economic crisis and um i yeah i think that the the solutions that we we might 
create during like to solve the the COVID um, pandemic, right? As a as a global as a global union, um, are maybe the same solutions we have to use to to fight to solve the climate crisis. So to 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 give you like so we basically feel that we have to tackle uh, supply before we tackle uh, the demand problem. We have to really we have to drive this momentum and we have to kind of uh, harmonize the, the the current um carbon markets so that you know you can also have cross uh, market um, exchanges and yeah this uh brings us to the next step so how are we envisioning the future and how things could be with regard to carbon markets um so yeah, you also you all know probably decentralized finance, and um, we think that on top of DeFi we actually need DK. So uh, DK, you know, it's not only for decarbonize. We need to decarbonize our world, but we have to create a decentralized accounting ecosystem. Uh, and what this means is basically we have to, uh, or we we envision uh, an ecosystem with different projects and. Um, a DAO, which is governing the different parts of the value chain uh, of, of emission reductions of carbon markets. So um, on, at the beginning of this value chain is we have to emit a proof of carbon removal. And how we envision to do this is that we bring the different stakeholders on board of this DAO. So it's the carbon offset projects. Um, it's also the auditors. And those can be different stakeholder groups, which have different rights within the within the day, uh, uh, DAO. But you can, for example, think of incentive mechanisms which are in place that when you um, when you submit a new proposal to to create um, new certificates, um, that you put a stake on this proposal, or that the auditors have to sign this proposal, and that the auditors may lose their stake if it's proven that it's a malicious uh, proposal, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. Um, this is something that is not completely fleshed out yet um, because we're at the beginning of the project, but we think that there are definitely enough um, mechanisms in place uh, to create more robust incentive uh, systems than, uh, than we, we currently have in the system. Then this DAO is also looking over, over the integration of the adoption part. So creating a token which represents one ton of sequestered carbon um, the price at which this token is sold, an API, uh, which is uh, allows DApps to connect um, to uh, to these token contracts easily, and you know we will we will look into this part um, in the like in the demo also of this new token project, and then also this the DAO could be responsible for driving demand, right? So we think that automation and simplicity is probably one of the biggest drivers. So having uh, option to automatically offset emissions when you do something um, with smart contracts, for, for, uh, for example, um, will lead to much more uh, activities that are actually um, priced incorrectly. And another vision that we have for the future is uh, a stable coin, which is actually backed by carbon offsets, right? So think of DAI, which is not only but yeah, it's not only collateralizing. Uh, ETH or you know other cryptocurrencies which are all correlated and you know don't provide that much stability in, in like to with regard to fluctuation. Uh, what if you could back die as well with like carbon offset certificates, tokenized carbon offset certificates or so other real world assets which represent which have like a positive uh, effect on the environment. And what this would lead to is that with rising adoption of this stable coin, this would also mean that we have to back it with more carbon offsets. So we would naturally increase the demand for um, for tokenized carbon offsets. And you can also think that this DAO is responsible for, you know, like a Moloch DAO for the carbon, for the decentralized carbon accounting ecosystem. So pro promoting the development of new projects. And we think that DeFi is definitely part of this, part of this ecosystem and that a lot of tools that exist today are like work really well and you know, maybe your project should also become part of this decentralized carbon accounting ecosystem. So we, as CO token, we see us really merrily as the, uh, as one of the projects who kickstart this ecosystem. 
And uh, how we plan to do this, I will, I will give you a short uh, intro into, into our project. So we started at, um, yeah, so I had this idea for a couple of, a couple of months already. And then I talked about it with Cham and Patrick and, and, and other friends. And so we decided to go um, to the East London Hackathon and start, start working on it. And it was, it was quite, a, quite a fun journey. And since then it has received a lot of traction. So yeah, I'm pretty excited. And this is basically the state of the current uh, project. So we have decided that we have to focus on the middle part first. So we have first to prove that tokenized carbon offsets um, have a market, right? And that people want to, to use these carbon offsets and that tokenized carbon offsets have uh, an advantage over the existing systems. So we have created a token contract, the CO2 con contract, um, we have created an API, so which allows everybody to interact with the CO2 contract, so any Web3 application. We have created Solidity modifiers, which uh, can be integrated into existing smart contracts so that the smart contracts, every time they're called, they automatically offset their carbon emissions. We've created the simple front end, a DAP, which allows everybody to directly offset their carbon emissions and um, a public track record of offsetting activity. So, we we, yeah, we call it a leaderboard, which is basically um, the, the idea is to gamify um, the carbon offsetting, right? So that also maybe different companies or also individuals want to be on top of this leaderboard to show their, um, their contribution towards uh, solving the climate crisis. And on the proof of carbon removal, we rely on a certifying body called Gold Standard, which is one of the most trusted uh, certifiers uh, today. But of course, ultimately, we, we aim to replace gold standard. But today, before we can do this, we work with them together. Yeah, so tokenizing the gold settings uh, certificates. And that's, the, that's the, the project architecture. So I will walk you through um, step by step. So. Uh, the first, the first part is buying existing certificates from these offset retailers like Gold Standard. And the the the, the DAO in our objective, uh, in, in our vision, needs to have a legal entity, right? It needs to, um, yeah, it needs to be in the legal space of like the state-based legal system, so that it's accountable also, and that it can like that it has this connection to the real world. And so the chain of events is you buy these certificates, you store proof of that um, purchase on, on IPFS. And then with that proof, you um, create a new proposal to mint, so to create uh, an equivalent amount of CO2 tokens. So say you have like bought 50 carbon offset credits, then now you want to um, create 50 CO2 tokens, which represent these carbon offsets. And now that we have these tokenized, carbon offset sitting in the CO2 token contract, we can now from the outside Ethereum world interact with the CO2 token contract through our um, API. So we've created um, uh, a library called ethco2.js, which is based on top of the ethos.js library. And what this allows, it allows any um, Web3 application to offer offset functionalities to their users. And um, the co2.io website is basically the first UI or the first step which is using this library. Uh, and how it works is you send DAI to our co token contract, which then retires or burns an equivalent amount of co tokens to like have a reliable proof that they cannot be used uh, a second time. And then you have the solidity mod modifier. So you can see that on the right, we have a, a contract which is called the polluter contract, which is just representative of any other smart contract in the Web3 ecosystem. And you know, when they when they are used, then they pollute. And they can use our offset modifier, which means that any transaction which goes through this polluter smart contract is automatically offset. And we batch these uh, offset transactions together to reduce the uh, the impact of our own. Um, yeah, of our own offsetting uh, computation. So um, I think it's time for a small demo to show you um, what we've actually built.
So let's see um, how this works. So this is now the, the, the fun part. Um, so yeah, you can see, you can see that. So uh, on the left side, you can see um, the DAO. So we've deployed the DAO on top of uh, DAO stack, um, mostly because it was super simple to set up. Um, yeah, so UI, I think is definitely, um, or UX also definitely an important, an important uh, aspect moving forward. And on the right, you can see our CO2 can website. So let's go through the, let's go through the steps. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping this is going to work. So as you can see, we've created inside of DAO stack, uh, our own plugin. So this plugin is called CO2 can, and it, what it allows us to do is basically to interact with our CO2 can smart contract. And if you look at it, so there's already a bunch of proposals out there, but let's create a new new proposal to mint for CO token for non con twenty twenty. Okay, and now as you can see, we have to provide an IPFS hash. So um, this is basically the hash of a certificate. So here we have a carbon offset certificate, for example, that we have uploaded to IPFS. And the hash is here in the top. So we put that in, which basically proves that we've purchased these, um, um, offsets, uh, these offsets. And we want to mint four new CO2 tokens because they, we bought four uh, tons of carbon. Okay, submit proposal. We have to verify the transaction. And now we should see a proposal coming up at some point. So uh, while, while this is verifying, you can see that on the right, uh, the token price that we currently that we currently um, have for one CO token is ten Dai, which is pretty low, but you know it's just for simplicity. You can see here the total supply of CO tokens and the amount of Dai that are in the smart contract. And I think I refresh that page to see if it pops up. Yes, so it should be somewhere uh, here. Mint for CO2 for non-con 2020. So uh, this is how our proposal currently looks. So, you know, we want to mint four CO2 cans and everybody can now click on this uh, link to IPFS uh, to take a look at the certificate, right? So this is not only members of the DAO can do this, but like any member of the public can do this. And, uh, you know, this is basically having open open books um yeah and for this um for this demo i've been made the benevolent dictator so i have enough reputation to pass that proposal by myself so this is running on rinkerby right now just to be just to be specific this is not live yet so let's validate this transaction so now let's take a look on the right to see the total supply of co tokens should now rise up so it's currently at 1897 co tokens and as soon as it's validated, we should see that number increase. So transaction has been passed. Drum roll. Uh, it's always exciting when it's live. Woo, perfect. Okay, this worked. I'm so excited. Cool. So now basically you've seen the process of creating um, new serial tokens. So now uh, let's take a look at how users would actually interact with this system. So my wallet is connected and I can now, for example, put in, you know, how much um, tons of CO2 I want to, I want to offset. So let's say we want to offset 19 tons of CO2 and we have a beautiful number. Um, offset my carbon footprint. You know, validate the transaction. And now you should see that as soon as this is verified, we have these two numbers changing. So the total supply of CO2 can should go down and actually I've made a wrong calculation. So it's actually not a beautiful number. 
uh, and the dye which are stored in the CO2 contracts should go up. And this happens any moment. Bingo. Did you see popping? I saw, yeah, I saw popping. Awesome. So, um, in the future, we, we, we envision also like different applications, like, you know, just input your Ethereum wallet address and uh, offset all your historical emissions or the classical offset, offset flights, but that's still not implemented. And last thing I want to show you is the leaderboard. So basically uh, the public track record of offsetting activities. And yeah, this is, this is still very simple, but you, you can see here the total amount of carbon that has been removed from the atmosphere through our CO2 can contract and how much uh, total dye we have received. We can see that we're currently number one on the leaderboard with a total of 30 CO2 tokens that we've retired because I've already retired some, like I've used the same wallet already. But uh, we can also use, you know, we can also check out other, like how other wallets are doing and see, you know, um, basically, you know, we're using the graph protocol to create our own smart contract and see uh, how, how it's doing. So yeah, I think this is probably, um, probably gives you an idea of uh of our um of what we've built so far so this has been built in the last five weeks so you know it's still very raw and um the next steps for us and the next call to actions for you are basically we are you know just at the beginning we want to build an ecosystem and we're really looking forward to anybody joining so if you're in the DeFi space or you know every, like somewhere else um, let's build this decentralized carbon accounting ecosystem together. Uh, we're running a Gitcoin grant to basically fund um, our project going mainnet on the Ethereum mainnet, because you know we want to validate our MVP and see that it's actually working and people are actually interacting with it. And lastly, you know we're just at the beginning. There's like a lot of the parts of the project are still just ideas. Um, and uh, it's not perfect. And we really hope that we can get feedback from the community. And if you have any like criticism um, by anything, just, just contact us. And you can also just ask some questions now if you want. So awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. And applause for this demo. No hiccups. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> perfect. perfect. So um, let me stop sharing my screen so we can see your faces again. Okay, yeah. Any questions from the audience in the chat channel or here in, in our interchat? Well, applause in the chat channel as well. So if anybody else wants to raise a question, I'd like to know, so I mean, this is a, one of the cases where, where you're not only working on an application, but you're really working on a huge system with many players yeah. involved. Of course, um, first thing is, especially in a hackathon, make it work and code it. But how do you see, how can you move on in terms of making this a reality? Yeah. So, um we're currently, so there's different parts. So we're currently part of the blockchain for social impact incubator. Mm -hmm. um, so um, trying to work more on the traditional business side of things. So, you know, what's the value proposition and all of that. And um, I'm personally also um, part of the Deep Science Ventures uh, Venture Builder, which is based in London. Mm -hmm. And um, so this is basically like a, they, same thing, we work together on, on fleshing this out and turning this into actually a real, a real thing. So um, definitely, the, basically the next steps is our getting, um, like validating our MVP to see if it works, mm. see if people wanted to use it, then um, getting in touch with businesses also if they want to, like if they can envision being part of something like this and um, yeah. Maybe Chem, do you have uh, any do you, anything to add to this? 
Yeah, I think you're pretty much on point, but uh, maybe something to emphasize is that this is already a pre-existing uh, market, essentially. And even uh, the, the blockchain uh, registration of these uh, carbon offsets is handled by some private companies at the moment that uh, companies are purchasing these offsets in order to have uh, sort of verifiable uh, registrations of their uh, you know reputation on chain. This is already happening. Um, but yeah, we would like to, uh, just like Rafael explained uh, quite well, we would like to harmonize this system in a potentially uh, ecosystem cultivating manner um, so that we can actually tokenize these offsets. And yeah, one of the, I think, biggest uses is the integration with uh, DeFi that can give exposure to DeFi uh, by creating... Uh, and on as a collateral potentially and i think these are uh, uh -huh. sort of okay. the directions that that we we will yeah. explore going forward and i think that um really the 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 one takeaway and i don't think i've stated it like strongly enough in the presentation is that um the the institution the global institution which is um managing carbon the, or which is trying to tackle the carbon problem should be an open ecosystem and should be a public good essentially right so um the, yeah I, I i don't i don't see this happening as a like privately owned entity uh, whatsoever because then mm -hmm. there's just weird incentives and people you know will try to s work in silos and if we really want to work in this together and we have to to solve the climate crisis well then let's make it as open and transparent uh, as possible and so uh, you mentioned, okay, if people want to use it, and I mean, I agree with Jem that this integration part is important and this is already an existing market, which is always a benefit. But then there's always this, uh, there's also the question that relates to that in the chat channel, how do you create value besides tokenizing, right? Well, as a... Um... As a whole, you mean, like, um, what what do you mean, like, in in this first instance or in the in the vision? So just well, and, and perhaps um, Phaeton also wants to add something on it. From my perspective, for the overall vision, so this, I mean, yeah. if you just put it simple, it could look like okay, we now will provide a new infrastructure to tokenize carbon rights to make it even more efficient to trade, like in DeFi, uh, which then mm, this might be picked up by either traders or on the other hand, the, the same uh, middleman parties that we have before. And, and the result of this is that they can even, well, earn more money because it's less, uh, less um, takes less effort for them, right? So their margin is even, even greater. So I'm I'm exaggerating. Yeah, here. this is my question. Mm, so um, this is basically so this is basically you know the the underlying assumption is that the current carbon markets are like fundamentally flawed, and I um, I don't the, most of the trading that is happening today with carbon credits is um, not. You know, it, they're trading. They're trading carbon credits with don't have any effective um, value or effective positive impact. And um, I think the first value that we're creating, or that we wish to create, so we're not creating in this first version of the of the project, but that we wish to create, is to provide kind of proof of proof of uh, carbon removal which is verifiable and which is more transparently verifiable than it's currently the, the, um, the, uh, the case. And this is very, that, this is really, I think the first, so we've been talking to, we've been talking to traditional players um, like that are in the space like South, South Pole or Atmosphere, which is a big one here in Germany. And they, what they tell me is that um, they have, a, they have really a hard time finding high quality projects because um, Many of the projects just follow, um, you know, these like weird standards, and um, their their demand for carbon offsets is actually higher than their the way than the potential supply of high quality offsets. 
and also they have uh, customers who wish to. They say, "Hey, we don't, we don't actually. Your offsets to go through gold standard. Uh, we trust you enough that we know that you do good projects. So why not cut gold standard out of the deal because they take up to thirty percent? So we see an opportunity to um, provide higher quality carbon offsets at a similar price. And actually, price is not mm. really the, the the driving force. It's really the assumption that." In the future, we have to, we, we really need some kind of proof that sequestration of carbon has effectively happened. And today, this whole carbon trading is just, it feels like a lot of greenwashing altogether. Mm. Yeah, and, and I think, I, I guess this will be part of your um, future work. So what exactly to incentivize, right? Yeah. Not only the tracking, but also reduction or... Uh, yeah whatever. Okay, cool. Um, Phaeton, do you want to add something here? Yes, I want to, yeah. Okay, uh, tokenizing, it, it, it's uh, becoming like a, a, a bureaucratic uh, work. Yes, we have the infrastructure system, so we can tokenize everything, yeah. Uh, and uh, since the system exists, like the Ethereum, there's a lot of value in the system, so we can recycle this value. Yeah, this is a the question uh, I'm asking is how can we put a uh, new value into the system? Uh, can you hear me? Because I cannot see you now. We hear you. I, I, I cannot see you now. I don't, I don't know if you can hear me. You. It's all fine. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. okay, great. So, uh, as you said, there is an existing system of carbon offsets, which is um, uh, manipulated and uh, whatever, yes, and uh, okay, who cares? It's, it's because it's between the corporations and the uh, policy makers. So the question is, uh, okay, you, uh, I like the idea. You want to create a, a new uh, standard, yeah. So the question is, how are you going to create value? I mean, besides uh, doing this. Uh, uh, tokenization, which as I said is, is okay, it's just a, a mapping, yes, tokenization is a mapping through a function, we map an asset to a, a, a digital asset, okay, but how do we create value? This is the question, uh, in, in what way do we benefit uh, uh, the world and the, uh, the Ethereum system uh, as a result? This is a I don't know if it's, just make if it's not clear, you, you, cannot, you should not answer. Yes, I don't know. Just, uh... yeah. so, so just to make sure that I understand, um, are you also asking how we like make value for ourselves? Like how we make profit or how we sustain ourselves? Uh, or not? How do we create value for the planet? How we create value for the planet, yeah. So um, I think uh, by providing um, a methodology that is reliable um, in the sense that it's a methodology which proves that carbon has actually been removed, right? So um, we provide value in make, so the, this is the first step, right? To have high quality carbon offsets where you can be sure that if you buy them, that carbon, which basically rep is represented by this tokenized asset uh, has really been removed from the atmosphere. Secondly, we provide um, the option to make it super easy to integrate uh, offsetting functionalities into legacy systems or into uh, also the new Ethereum ecosystem through modifiers through the API. So, uh, and this is something that we don't want to do alone, right? Like, um, please, please, if you, if some people from MetaMask are here, uh, you know, it can be cool to just have a, a plug or to build like an extension of MetaMask, which um, automatically uh, offsets uh, your crypto uh, transactions, right? So um, I think this is also value that we're providing to the Ethereum ecosystem that we basically provide a tool which makes it easy or which makes it possible to use uh, Web3 without having bad conscience because you know that you're using systems which consume a lot of energy. And just to give you like an idea, a uh, standard ERC-20 transaction today um, needs as much energy or produces as much, as much carbon as one U.S. household does in one day. And for Bitcoin, it's like 20 times that number. So 
Um, yeah, I don't know if that uh, answers the question. I will, uh, I will put it uh, motion. Yeah. Um, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe I can also chime in uh, because you made a great point uh, talking about because added value is a tricky concept. You, you, you mentioned that one is for the planet and the other is also for the Ethereum ecosystem. What is the value that's, that uh, we are interfacing with the external economy to uh, sort of the Ethereum space? And that's a great point because uh, that is also what we were trying to emphasize in sort of this potentiality for um, tokenized carbon offsets as becoming a bridge between um, real world assets that uh, that interfaces with existing carbon markets and Ethereum ecosystem. And this uh, is becoming very uh, a very obvious need when we're talking about uh, you know diversified stable coins that uh, are actually uh, sort of collateralized with real world assets. So if we can actually achieve to have that tokenization constitute uh, an an accurate description of uh, you know the offsets being purchased by real world companies that are uh, verifiable carbon reductions then actually uh, we are bringing something uh, very valuable to the ethereum ecosystem which is this uh, one on one side uh, carbon offsets in the real world going through the ethereum ecosystem but also the stability that it's uh, leaving as residue inside the uh, defi ecosystem i would say that's a very important uh, point to emphasize but please go on sorry for interrupting yeah and so, maybe um yeah. last thing Offsets today are not really used or are used very little because people don't trust them and they don't trust them for good reason. So the value that we're providing is creating offsets that can be trusted. And then uh, you're right, right? This is only the supply of carbon offsets. And then we have to tackle the demand. We have to find ways to make the demand skyrocket so that we actually provide value for the planet um, and that we sequester carbon at a higher rate. And we just think that the tokenization of these trusted carbon assets is, are like, it's this first primitive, which can then unlock many different ways to make that demand increase. For example, through a stable currency, which when it's used um, more, like is like needs to like re um, creates more uh, demand for carbon reductions or through integrations in, in you know, think of computation, uh, you know, today AI is consuming a lot of um, like machine learning algorithms are consuming a lot of energy and you could automatically offset this energy uh, through smart contracts if you, if you wanted to, right? Just make it easy for businesses to um, offset their, uh, their activities and at the same time provide a public track record of, of that so that they can do this and at the same time um, signal, their, signal uh, or show that they're doing it. So... Thank you. So basically, you're reducing the friction. You're making this process easier. Yeah. Yeah. You can say this. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Any more questions? Take your chance. Three minutes left until we start the next talk. No? Okay. So I'm sure. Uh, first of all, cross fingers for Wednesday. Thank you. Uh, it was a brilliant presentation and awesome uh, test run of your application. And um, uh, yeah, we definitely stay in touch. And I'm really looking forward to see more, particularly on how this style could be set up. We didn't touch on that topic and it could be another session, yeah. I guess. Yeah, that, uh, and, um, yeah. Super exciting. And I really just want to emphasize that we, you know, we haven't, this is the beginning and, you know, we, we, we haven't figured it all out yet. So there's yeah. a lot to do and um, a lot of the ideas might not work out like that, but we think that there's enough like uh, opportunity in the space to mm -hmm. just make something better. So mm -hmm. the more people are working on this and the more we challenge each other, um, right, the better. So. Great. Thank you so much.